Imagine that your partner is like a rubber band and it has been stretched to its limit. So if you chase him when he pulls away, the rubber band will keep stretching more and more further away until it completely snaps and breaks. However, Hey besties, and welcome to a brand new Almost Adulting, the largest self-love podcast and movement, your number one destination for personal growth and mental health. I am your big sister and host, Violetta. Today's episode is all about why men pull away and the psychology behind a man's mind. I read a couple of books written by men over the weekend, so you don't have to. Before we dive in, I had a quick little update because a lot of you guys have been asking me about this. My update is about my mother. She is doing, as you know, my mother is sick and she tends to have more bad days than good days. She is doing all right so far. Um, Her condition has not gone worse, but because of her condition and everything that's going on with her health, I recently had a brand deal that I got And the brand deal paid very well. And I decided to take some of that money and buy my parents, my mom and my dad, a trip to Israel because my parents have not been back home since we moved to the U.S., which was, you know, 15 years ago. They never traveled outside of the U.S. And my sister and I both have. And I felt that my parents deserved that. My dad never got to go to his mother's grave And my mom never got to see her family in Israel. And my dad talks about going to Israel every other year, how he wants to go. And now with my mom's health not being the best, I just, just the thought of the fact that maybe next year she won't be able to travel, I decide to surprise them. So without even thinking twice, I booked them a trip to Israel business class. Obviously it wasn't cheap, but it was worth it. I didn't even think twice about it. And I surprised my parents for my mom's birthday, which just passed with a trip to Israel later this year. So they have something to look forward to. Plus, I know that really helps when you have something to look forward to. It helps with your mental health, which can also help with your physical health. And that was a goal. And they're very happy. And I feel very happy. And I think that's the best reward you can ask for when you make good money, at least for me, the first thing I think about is how I can take care of my parents or help them anyway, or make them happy. So I'm ecstatic about that. So that was my little update. But now let's get started with why you're really here. But again, by the way, you guys, thank you so much for checking in. I do really appreciate that. I thought that was really nice for everyone that checked in about my mother. All right, besties, let's face it. When a man starts to pull away, it feels like we are in a bad rom-com is the same story every time. You probably didn't even really like the guy at first. Then this guy wins you over. You finally let your guard down. You let him into your heart and into your cervix and boom, just like that, he's gone. If this was a rom-com, it feels like you suddenly wake up and spilled coffee all over your new blouse and then a car hits a puddle while driving past you and then you accidentally shart yourself on the subway. I know it's a bad analogy, but basically it's just not your day and you can't figure out what you did wrong. The confusion, the doubt, the fear, we all start to obsess over this. We start to question ourselves. We start to wonder what went wrong. We start to replay every single text in our head and every conversation. We try to come up with a plan of how can I win this guy back? we suddenly forget how much we had to convince ourselves to even like this guy in the first place. Suddenly, here you are, desperate to get his attention. And the more you react, the more you chase him, the more he pulls away. It's like you're the star of your own personal version of how to lose a guy in 10 days, and you're not even getting paid to do it. (laughs) But don't worry, Bessie, because today I'm going to teach you how to break free from this rom-com by learning the psychology of why men pull away based on research from various male dating experts, including the book, Why Men Don't Love Women Like You, written by G.L. Lambert, and the other book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, written by John Gray. I read it all, I listened to it all, and I'm going to give you the key notes on exactly why men 
pull away, what to do when men pull away, and how to get them back if you even want them back at that point. So sit back, relax, and get ready to take some notes as we dive into the wacky world of men and relationships because this is going to be a game changer. And I will explain to you by using the following three steps, okay? Three layers, three things that you should know. The truth is, it's not always about us. But from my research, here are the main reasons why men pull away from the mouths of men. It's going to be hard to hear. Trust me, you're not alone. But here are some reasons. Number one, men might pull away when they're feeling overwhelmed or uncertain about their feelings. They might need space to process their own emotions or they might be afraid of commitment. Some men might feel overwhelmed by just that idea of being in a committed relationship especially if they just got out of a relationship or they've been hurt before or they've been let down in the past or their hamster died 17 years ago and they never processed it. This fear can even cause them to pull away as a form of self-protection. And a lot of people do this with dating these days where they get defensive or they feel the need to protect themselves, especially research shows the beginning of dating. When two people really like each other, a lot of times these two people might pull away from each other because they're overwhelmed by the fear of being hurt. Other times, some men need space to process their own stress. They feel overwhelmed because they have their own stuff going on, like work or family things. They may feel suffocated if a woman comes on too strong or tries to move the relationship forward too quickly. In these cases, pulling away can be a way for a man to regain a sense of control over his own life. AKA, men pull away as a way of regaining their independence and a sense of self. This can happen actually at any stage of the relationship. So this is not just in the beginning of the relationship, but it can be in the middle, the end, marriage, anytime, as long as it's triggered by stress or anxiety. So this is just a little fun surprise for you to look forward to since, again, it can happen at any stage of the relationship more than once. Other times men can pull away because they're not sure about the relationship. They're not sure about their feelings. They're not sure where the relationship is headed. Or he may pull away in order to gain clarity or avoid making a commitment he's not ready for. Sometimes they think they're ready, people in relationships in general, and then once they're in it, they realize that it's too much for them, that they made a mistake, that it's not right, and they're not ready for anything. In some cases, this uncertainty may stem from a lack of communication or conflicting expectations because this guy maybe ends up realizing he's just not that into you. So then he's doing you a favor by leaving or there's someone else he realizes he likes more than you. That's the truth. Now, according to the book, Why Men Don't Love Women Like You by G.L. Lambert, he states the men pull away from women because... They can sense that a woman is more invested in the relationship than they are, especially in the beginning. This can happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe because the woman is acting too eager, too needy, too clingy, meaning you are giving your all from the beginning. Suddenly you are opening up your schedule so you can see this man. You are calling him more, you're texting him more. And now this guy is feeling, okay, this feels weird. She's too eager. She's too clingy. Maybe they can sense that a woman is to invest in the relationship more than they are. When a man feels like he's being suffocated by a woman's expectations, he will start to pull away. Obviously hearing these things is going to trigger you. And I know it's not nice. It will piss anyone off. It bruises your ego, hurts your feelings. It makes you feel defensive. And you're not wrong for feeling any of these emotions, but this is exactly the moment where you should not act out. You should not act on your feelings. And I know this part is hard, but here are the three steps that you should do. So listen up. By the way, you guys, if you already acted quote unquote a fool and you've done the complete opposite of what I'm about to tell you to do, that is okay as well. Because tomorrow is a new day and you can start over and it will still work with your man if he's right for you. Trust me, okay? So we have step one. Do not go Britney Spears on him. When a man dumps you and goes completely cold, he expects you to go crazy. He assumes you're going to get emotional. He prepares himself by pulling away even faster. He's expecting you to break down. 
So what are you going to do? You're going to do the opposite of that. You're going to refrain. You're going to refrain from sending him crazy texts. Whatever text you were thinking of texting him, send it to your friend. And even if you already did that, you can stop right now. Go back to being exactly who you were when you first met or prior to that. That means whatever screenshots of pathetic sad quotes you already saved in your phone that you are ready to post today or tomorrow in your Instagram stories, delete them right now. Your man does not give a shit, okay? He doesn't give a shit. Even if you're crying every single day and every night, he does not need to know this. Seeing those pathetic quotes in your stories like, she was the sun and he got hot standing too close to her or all she wanted is to be loved. So she needs to wait for the right person who will see you. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Save that shit for your therapist, not for your Instagram. Posting that stuff will either make him feel better about himself, how heartbroken you are because he must be such a cash that you can't get over him, or it will validate his decision that he ran since you are so quote unquote emotional, you know, because you have feelings, men. So either post on social media like any other day, like you're thriving, or if you can't help yourself with your sad quotes, then just avoid social media and be mysterious. So he has no idea what you're up to, no sad quotes, no sad music, and definitely no crazy revenge posts. You will regret those. Not only will this validate his decision again to take space and never speak to you again, but it's going to push away other potential suitors because in the end, that only makes you look bad and only makes you feel good for two seconds and then you're sad again. It's just unnecessary energy and no one deserves that much of your attention. So basically, when you either post the same stuff you did before, you disappear, even if you already went crazy on him, it's going to slowly make him question you going silent. Like, wait, she acted like she cared so much and now she, it's like she doesn't even care. Did I make a mistake? Was she always this chill? Did she even like me? Because she acted like she did. And now it's like, I don't even exist. Is there someone new? I'm confused. So you don't text him. And then if he texts you, you don't respond or you take your time to respond. You let him wonder why he let a queen like you go. So when he texts you, depending on what you want from this, either don't respond at all so you can move on or you respond sometimes, take your time, be short. And the only time you really respond is when he actually wants to set up a plan of why you guys should get back together. So if he's texting you, I miss you. Yeah, no fucking shit, you miss me. I'm bored with this. <laughs> you can just heart it. Wait for that meaningful text. It will come. You really have to try to not care because nothing draws people in more than when you're super chill about things, especially in the beginning, when you act like you don't care because when you pretend like you don't care, eventually you really don't. I know when I'm too serious about things, whether it's a work with friends, dating, that's usually when people call me intense and they run away. <laughs> so you got to just do your best to be chill, to not take things personally, to laugh it off, at least in the beginning. And that's where it takes you to step number two. Do not chase him. I read somewhere and it said, anything you chase in life runs away, especially with a man, except one exception. If you chase him in a black nighty, first he'll have sex with you and then he'll run. So it is imperative for you to understand that it is normal for men to pull away at times from the beginning of a relationship to the middle to whenever. Men do this. It's not abnormal that you're currently experiencing this. This is very normal. All of these men wrote this in their books. It's often actually a natural response to stress, to liking someone too much. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he's losing interest in you or he doesn't care about the relationship. So I just want to validate those emotions for you. So instead of panicking or trying to force him to open up, it's important that you give him space and time to process his emotions. I'm trying to give you this new perspective to better understand what's going on so you don't 
just think of your own feelings and you try to understand where this other person is coming from. Because it really is true. Men really are from Mars and women really are from Venus. We really do things differently. How we give advice, how we process things is the truth. So it is true. Men do tend to need space. And us as women, sometimes we get so stuck in our masculine energy that we don't even realize that we are doing it. But now we're stressed, we're chasing, we have to prize to win. And that prize is this man. Now we have this tunnel vision and we don't realize that the harder we try, the more they pull away. And there's a reason for that. So in the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, he uses an analogy to help explain why men sometimes need space and why the more you chase, the more they pull away. So imagine that your partner is like a rubber band on your hand and it has been stretched to its limit. The tension is just too much and he needs to pull away. So if you chase him when he pulls away, the rubber band will keep stretching more and more further away until it completely snaps and breaks. However, if you let him do his thing, if you let him go, if you stay calm because you feel true in yourself and you know your value, then you stay right here he will eventually come back because just like the rubber band goes like this, if you stay right here, eventually the rubber band will snap back into your arm. Just like that, a rubber band that has been stretched too far will bounce back to its original shape. So this analogy suggests that men sometimes just need their space to process their emotions and work through their problems on their own. So if a woman tries to force him to open up, to talk about things when he's not ready, or pursue him when he pulls away, it creates even more tension and distance in the relationship. But if you give him space that he needs, he will eventually come back to you when he's ready. The key is to trust in the strength of your relationship and to have the patience as during this time of temporary distance, this is especially true in the beginning of relationships, but can also happen during other times. Again, what I'm telling you is not fun to hear. And of course, our egos are coming in the way right now. And it's like, well, fuck this guy. But I am just telling you from their perspective, if you want to make this relationship work in the beginning, you have to put up with this. At no point does anyone ask you to wait around. You should always do what's best for you. But stressing over it, sitting around waiting for him to come back or chasing him is definitely not doing what's best for you or for your self-esteem or for your mental health. When someone pulls away, it is hurtful. And you have to decide whether or not you have the emotional capacity to accept that person back when they come back. So in the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, they discuss how women's instincts, the man pulling away, immediately will be to punish him for it. Just like right now when I was telling you all of this, my instinct is, well, fuck this guy. I will never speak to him again. Or I'll make sure he knows how mad I am when he comes back. So the book discusses that. It says... When a man pulls away, a woman feels hurt. She feels rejected. She feels insecure. Her instinct response will be to try to regain control of the situation by punishing him in some way, such as giving the silent treatment, being critical or angry, withdrawing sex or affection. And babe, I don't blame you. You're going to feel bitter and you're going to feel unsafe. However, the book emphasizes that punishing a man by pulling away is not the right approach. That's because it serves to create more distance and resentment in the relationship. When you act distant, it's definitely going to scare him enough that he's going to reconsider ever acting out again. But unfortunately, because taking space may be what makes him feel safe, it means the next time he needs to feel safe, he needs to do what feels right for him, which is to take a moment and pull back to gather his thoughts since he's unable to do this because he's afraid now to lose you and you think that's going to work for you, unfortunately, that's going to make him grow resentful towards you and eventually is going to cause a separation. That's through a man's perspective. I know. What effing bullshit? I'm with you. I know. Because what about me? What about my feelings? But again, I'm explaining you from a man's perspective. So what can you do after your feelings are hurt? How can you let him know if you can't act out with distance or punishment, all that? Well, the book suggests that it's important to communicate your feelings to your partner in a calm, non-judgmental way when he comes back. 
That means you express them how you feel, what you need in the relationship for you to feel safe rather than blame, criticize, or withhold affection. So for example, you can explain how next time, if he needs this time alone to just let you know, so then you're aware that has nothing to do with you and he just needs some space and you will give him that space versus last time when he just didn't communicate it and you thought there was something wrong. And again, if him pulling away doesn't work with your attachment style, it doesn't make you feel safe, it's a non-negotiable for you, then it just means that you two are not right for each other and then you can walk away. The point here is that communication and honesty with yourself and with your partner is key. The book also suggests that it's important to focus on rebuilding connection and trust in the relationship rather than, again, punishing your partner. Ultimately, in the end, it's up to each individual woman to decide what's best for her in every situation, okay? So if you feel that your partner's behavior is consistently hurting you, it's consistently disrespectful, then yeah, this is not for you and you need to reassess the relationship and you have to consider whether or not this is the right fit for you. But if you feel safe in the relationship, you feel like you can trust your partner, if you believe him that he genuinely cares about you and he just needs space, then giving him space will work out because it's just a little short term in order to make your long-term relationship work. So yes, do not chase him, but also do not sit around and wait for him to figure out how he feels about you. You also don't need to give him a time limit to check in with him, to see if he's figured it out yet. You can respectfully leave. You don't need to announce your departure. This isn't an airport. If someone acts like they don't care for the sake of your own mental health, believe them. Forcing someone to care about you has never worked. Let them go and live your life. And hopefully they'll understand that when they come back, which they will, by the way, they always do. And I'll prove it to you that you may be around or you won't, but that's a risk they have to take when they leave. And to be completely transparent with you, the truth is that I definitely react more times than not when this happens. And this has happened to me every time. And I definitely cannot let go of first, at least not the first week, whether they leave or I leave, I always try to be friends with them. And they always say we're friends, but they don't mean it. That always hurts my feelings. And then I try for the first week and then I give up. I try because I know that once they come back, I will not want them anymore. And I try to hold on. I know it's silly, but I just wanted to share this with you because I don't want you to think that there's something wrong with you if you can't follow the first and second step. Sometimes you do have to react before you're finally ready to take the step and let go for a little bit. It's not always easy to follow these rules or the logic behind a man's mind. While we too have our own emotions and our own thoughts. But after that first week, I always stop. I release and I let go. And guess what? They do come back. Just not when you want them to. They come back when you finally let go. Not just physically and in text, but in your energy when you move on. Okay, so moving on to step number three. Step number three, focus on yourself. By focusing on yourself, giving him space and setting boundaries, you can create a healthy, loving relationship with a man who truly values you because he sees that you don't need him and you're not chasing him and you gave him the space and you respected him for the space that he needed. This is based on these books that I read, written by men. Or I think you can also stop trying to change yourself to fit into what you think a man wants and instead focus on becoming the best version of yourself. When you're confident and you're secure in who you are, men will just naturally be drawn to you. You can try and focus on yourself so much that you will completely forget about him and you will find someone who actually deserves you. And by this time, when this man comes back, you won't even want him, which is where now my advice comes into play. So now part three is a mix of man's advice with mine. Now that you know what you need to do when he pulls away, aka do not chase him and let him come back on his own while you focus on yourself, then you can decide how you feel when he comes back because he will come back. So now I'm going to give you the most unhinged advice. This advice is going to make, to make your blood boil. It's going to really force you to focus on yourself during this time and not wait around for him. I'm doing this to help you shift your energy 
at least for right now, in order to help you get out of your current funk that you're in. Because the current energy that you're in, this energy of trying to get him back is the worst energy he can possibly be in. You're putting this energy into the universe where you literally need to do nothing. So stop. Do not apologize. Do not nag. Just stop. A woman in her feminine energy focuses on herself. So don't worry anymore if he's going to come back, which he will. Just like the rest of them who have come back. Instead, let's get you back into your feminine energy. And this is where part three comes in. Let's fucking go. Step three, you know, focus on yourself. How can you focus on yourself? Do not be the nice girl. The nice girl is the girl that gives her all. She's posting those sack quotes on Instagram. She's that woman that loves you so deeply. And she posts about how she's praying for her man, even if he's not around. She's such a keeper. When you guys have only been dating for two weeks, girl, chill. This girl jumps in blindly before her attention is even reciprocated because she loves the idea of love more than the actual love that she's getting. She tries to figure out what he likes from her looks or outfits to figure out how to play it so he will want her more. She never stops to realize that she barely even knows the guy. That's right, babe. You never even liked the guy in the first place. You only care now because he's gone. And we've all been there. If you put aside your needs, your wants, and your self-care for a man, it will turn him off, especially in the beginning when he hasn't even earned it. Us women love being in our feminine and we love to sacrifice ourselves for happiness of others. Hence, our motherly instincts kick in. But this is not your son and no man wants to fuck their mother. Why are you catering to a man's needs the way my sister caters to her children? Stop thinking you can change him. Did he shit his pants? No, you are not his mother. When you act like he's so amazing, like you're his mother, he stops trying to cater to you. He stops trying to court you. He stops trying to better himself, to be a better man for you because you're showing him that he doesn't have to try anymore. That makes him bored. You are so available. It makes him lose interest because he doesn't even need to bother to try to get to know you because you're an open book. You're so desperate to be loved by him. And men can smell desperation. She pulls away and here you are running after him, asking why he's not checking in, why he's not doing this or that. The same way his mom nagged him to do his laundry, to pick up his clothes, to wash the dishes, same energy. So step out of that energy and put yourself first. Get back into your goddess energy. Be more selfish. You want to teach this man a lesson? Then do nothing. The sexiest thing about you shouldn't be the thirst traps that you post on Instagram to get his attention when he's acting out. The sexiest thing about you should be how quickly you leave him alone. Because men do not learn with words. They learn with silence. Sometimes the most powerful thing that you can say to a man to prove your point is nothing at all. Because remember, I cannot control who loves me, but I can definitely control whether or not I love myself. And the best way you can love yourself is by giving yourself grace. Stop blaming yourself on why someone didn't choose you. Stop replaying the text messages in your head, in your mind, or the exact moment where you think something went wrong. Stop lying to yourself that you're somehow unlovable. Stop thinking that you don't have a choice. You do have a choice. And you can stop right now. And you can start over by putting yourself first. You are so focused on falling in love with the idea of someone that you forgot to fall in love with yourself. So if you wanna get back into your goddess energy, if you wanna stand out, then you can do this with your confidence, with your sass, with knowing exactly who the fuck you are and knowing that no one can take that away from you. Whether he calls you or not, you do not give a fuck because your life will not change whether or not he's in it. Of course, it would be nice if he's in your life, yes, but you will still continue living on with or without him. That's how you stand out. Not with your looks, not with how much attention you can give him, not with new hobbies that you picked up, not by stalking him, not with comparisons, not with nudes, and definitely not by begging him to love you, but with being content in who you are in your current life. 
the best thing you have to offer about yourself is you. Your confidence is what will make you stand out. You have to believe that you are desired, that men want you, and then other people will start to believe you too. If you loved yourself the same way you love the idea of this man's validation, you'd be unstoppable. Think about that. Understand that other people are only as powerful as you allow them to be in your life. Shrink the thoughts that you give them and you will literally shrink the role of them in your life. Why would you give someone else so much attention, whether they didn't text you back or they didn't want to date you or whatever it is? Why do you care so much when they're just a small supporting role in your movie that's your life? And let me tell you this, the truth is the real interest does not peak. Real interest rises. So if his attention is suddenly gone after a week or two or a month, then the reality is he was not that interested to begin with. If he started to back off in the beginning, he was never your Mr. Right. Let him go and keep going. And again, I'm giving you this advice so in this exact moment, you can try to move on. Who knows what's gonna happen when he comes back, but for now, you have to let him go. And for now in your head, you have to tell yourself that's not your person because your person would never act this way. Because what's gonna happen three years down the line when he needs space again? Is he just gonna act out like this again? Are you gonna be okay with that? Because no man who is actually meant for you will get away. That means if this guy's meant for you, he will come back at his own pace. And there's nothing you need to do right now, except continue to live your life and do you. If it's meant to be, it will be. We're trying to force it will not work out for you. I tried that. So the truth is sometimes men love the idea of you, but not the idea of actually investing any time in you. It's harsh to hear but it's better to see this in the beginning than later on. If a man is interested in you, he will make it obvious. You won't have to wonder. He will make it abundantly clear. He will do anything to get a woman's attention. So stop making excuses for whatever dude right now left you confused. And now you're up at 2 a.m. Googling his zodiac sign and, you know, what kind of magic spell to do in order to get him back. It doesn't work. I've tried that too. (laughs) So it's not that he's too busy. It's not that he's shy. It's not that he's intimidated. It's not anything that you did wrong. You didn't make him angry. He's not going through a tough time. It's because maybe he's just not right for you. Whatever excuse you told yourself, it's time to trust your inner voice. That's making you question why you even liked him in the first place. If he were into you, you'd know. And at this exact moment, he clearly is not. So if you've given it your all and it's still not enough, then learn to let go. Know when it's time to give up on someone and move on before you waste all of your time and all of your energy on someone who doesn't deserve you. So as annoying as it is to hear all of this, I personally did enjoy understanding the man's perspective with the first two things that I discussed because I think it did help me and hopefully you guys as well understand that in a lot of ways, when men pull away, it's not personal. And if we just removed our ego from this, we would understand that. Again, you don't have to actually accept this behavior, but I think people in general now do a lot of stupid things, especially in the beginning of dating to protect themselves, whether it's pulling away and unintentionally hurting the other person or acting out, which is something I've done in the past many times. And then you unintentionally push the other person away or whatever else that people do in order to feel safe. Being vulnerable in the beginning of relationships is scary, especially when you like someone. I think dating nowadays has gone really hard. And I think therapy and a lot of coaching advice has actually made things even worse because we end up just focusing on ourselves and justifying our actions and running away and giving up on people too easily especially also because of dating apps, because there's always someone around the corner. So there is no right or wrong answer here when it comes to dating and to someone that you like. You will continue to get your heart broken until you meet the right person, until you meet someone who's on the same page with you at this exact time. Dating works, but it's not some magical thing where you never have conflict. It's about how you deal with the conflict when it happens. Will you be understanding when they come back? After they pulled away because they deserve grace, will they be understanding with you if you tell them you're not okay with it? 
Will you be caring and forgiving when someone acts out because they've never experienced a healthy relationship before? Or will you walk away because it's too much for you? There is no right or wrong answer. But if you want to make it work with someone, then don't give up on them. Don't run away if they come back. Don't shut someone out until you hear them out. We never know what's going on in someone else's mind. We never know why people do what they do. But always, I would say at the end of the day, listen to your instincts and listen to your gut. Your gut usually knows when someone's right for you. And there's a difference between someone that pulled away and someone that completely treats you like shit and does it every single time. So I hope you enjoy this episode and I hope you got to learn from it as much as I did. I wish you the best with whoever it is that you're currently dating or talking to. And I promise you, this person will come back. So for now, just focus on yourself, okay? I love you besties. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe. We have a new episode every Tuesday and Thursday. We have subscription coming out soon as well. So tune in for that. And lastly, please leave me a five-star review if you enjoyed this episode. I read all of the reviews and it really does help the podcast. I love you and have a beautiful day. Mwah.